Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have given. Oh, mercy, Lord. Thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. For giving your life, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. And so, Father, I just want to thank you this morning. Eternal Rock of Ages, I sought you. Daddy, I worship you as I say thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your blood that cleanses us from my very righteousness. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, once again this morning, I bring before you this platform, the reading of your word. Lord, sanctify it with the blood. Sanctify, O oh Lord, with the blood as I pray the blood of Jesus over myself, over this platform. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that your word will go mightily and prevail. Holy Spirit of the living God, take over, I pray. Take charge, O oh Lord. Let the name of Jesus be highly exalted. For he alone is truly the Lord and Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you as your word brings light, refresh me, and of course, Lord, straight to all than it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Good morning once again. Good morning, good afternoon. Good whatever time of the day, in fact, whatever time of the day it is where you are, the good of it to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Once again, my name is Sister Sagatise, bringing you the reading of the word as it is on Fires Runs International Facebook page. Praise the Lord. Today will be our last reading for the year. I will pick up again on the 2nd of January. Amen. Which, as it happens to be Monday, what a way to begin the year, reading the Bible Sunday. What a depth of way, worshiping God. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, today will be the last day, and I uh, will be stopping at Ezekiel chapter 30 today. I will pick up on 31. Uh, well, let's see, maybe we'll have a quick look at all. Uh, the Lord helping us, but anyway, that is it. So I'm just going to share my screen as we read the last chapter for the year. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And of course, as usual, we have to declare, and we do declare that the Bible contains the word of the one and only true living eternal sovereign God and of his son, Jesus Christ, who is both Lord and Savior and is also the soon coming King. Hallelujah. For this reason, we are enjoined to read, to study, and to meditate on the word of God and we have the scriptures that encourages us to do so, sorry. And of course, this is the book of Ezekiel. Hallelujah. And like I said, like I like to call him, the priest who saw God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just take off the background. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's dig in. Ezekiel chapter 25. Proclamation against Ammon. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Say to the Ammonites, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God, because you said, ah, because you said, aha, against my sanctuary when it was profaned and against the land of Israel when it was desolate and against the house of Judah when they went into captivity. Indeed, I will deliver you as a possession to the men of the east and they shall set their encampment among you and make their dwellings among you. They shall eat your fruit and they shall drink your milk. And I will make Rabbah a 
stable for camels and Ammon, a resting place for, the, for flocks. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. For thus says the Lord God, because you clapped your hands, stamped your feet, and rejoiced in heart with all your disdain for the land of Israel. Indeed, therefore I will stretch out my hand against you and give you as a plunder to the nations. I will cut you off from the peoples and I will cause you to perish from the countries. I will destroy you and you shall know that I am the Lord. Hmm. Proclamation against Moab. Thus says the Lord God, because Moab and Seah say, look, the house of Judah is like all the nations. Therefore, behold, I will clear the territory of Moab of cities, of the cities on its frontiers, the glory of the country. But Jeshmoth, Baal, and Kijat him. To the men of the east, I will give it as a possession together with the Ammonites, that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. And I will execute judgment upon Moab, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Proclamation against Edom. Thus says the Lord God, because of what Edom did against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and has greatly offended by avenging itself on them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand against Edom, cut off man and beast from it, and make it desolate from Teman. Dead and shall fall by the sword. I will lay my vengeance on Edom by the hand of my people Israel, that they may do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, says the Lord God. Proclamation against Philistia. Thus says the Lord God, because because the Philistines dealt vengefully and took vengeance with a spiteful heart to destroy because of the whole old hatred. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will stretch out my hand against the Philistines and I will cut off the charities and destroy the remnant of the seacoast. I will execute great vengeance on them with furious rebukes and they shall know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance on them. Hallelujah. If you notice, every time in each of these proclamations, God was rebuking these nations and dealing with them because they mocked Judah and Israel in their moments of distress, in the moment in which God was judging them. What do we have to learn from that? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Do not mock a man in his that moment. Do not mock a man when he is cast down. Or he will rise again. And besides, the God of mercy will always show mercy. Let's read on. Ezekiel 26, proclamation against time. And it came to pass in the 11th year, on the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, because thou has said against Jerusalem, Aha, she, she is broken, who, has, who was the gateway of the peoples. Now she is turned over to me. I shall be filled. She is laid waste. Therefore, thus says the Lord God. Behold, I'm against you, O Thai, and will cause many nations to come up against you, as the sea causes its waves to come up, and they shall destroy the walls of Thai and break the heart towers. I will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. It shall be a place of spreading nets in the midst of the sea, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. It shall become plunder for the nations. Also her daughter, um, her daughter villages which are in the fields shall be slain by the sword. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Thus says the, for thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will bring a guest tie from the north, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of kings, with horses, with chariots, and with horsemen, and an army with many people. He will slay with the sword your daughter villages in the fields. He will heap up a seed mud against you, build a wall against you, and raise a defense against you. He will direct his battery rams against your walls, and with his axes he will break down your towers. Because of the abundance of his horses, their dust will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen, the wagons, 
and the chariots when he enters your gates as men enter a city that has been breached. With the hoofs of his horses, he will trample all your streets. He will slay your people by the sword and your strong pillars. And your strong pillars will fall to the ground. They will plunder your riches and pillage your merchandise. They will break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. They will lay your stones and your timber and your soil in the midst of the water. I will put an end to the sound of your songs and the sound of your harp shall be heard no more. I will make you like the top of a rock and you shall be a place of spreading nets and you shall never be put, says the Lord. For the Lord have spoken, says the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to time. Will the coastland not shake at the sound of your fall when the wounded cry, when slaughter is made in the, in the midst of you? Then all the princes of the sea will come down from their thrones, lay aside their robes, take off their embroidered garments. They will clothe themselves with trembling. They will sit on the ground, tremble every moment be and be astonished at you. And they will take up a lamentation for you and say to you, how you have perished, O one inhabited by seafaring men, O renowned city, who was strong at sea, she and her inhabitants, who caused their terror to be on all her inhabitants. Now the coastland tremble on the day of your fall. Yes, the coastland by the sea are, trou are troubled at your departure. For thus says the Lord God, when I make you a desolate city like the cities that are not inhabited, when I bring the deep upon you and great waters cover you, then I will bring you down with those who descend to the, to the people of old. And I will make you dwell in the rest part of the earth, in the places desolate from antiquity, whose, with whose with those who go down to the pit, so that you may never be inhabited. And I shall establish glory in the land of the living. I will make you a terror, you shall be no more. Though you are sought for, you will never be found again, says the Lord God. Ezekiel chapter 27. Lamentation for time. The word of the Lord came again to me saying, now, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Ty and say to Ty, you who are situated at the entrance of the sea, the merchant of the peoples of many coastlands, thou says the Lord God. O Ty, you have said, I am perfect in beauty. I am perfect in beauty. Your borders are in the midst of the sea. Your builders have perfected your beauty. They made all your plants of fair trees from from Sinai, they took a cedar from Lebanon to make you a mast of oaks. From Bashan, they made you owl, oars. The company of Asherites have inlaid your plants with ivory from the coast of Cyprus. Fine embroidered, embroidered linen from Egypt was what you spread for yourself. Blue and purple from the coast of Elisha was what, you covered, what, what covered you. Inhabitants of Sidon and Avad were your oatsmen, your wise men, Otai, were in you. They became your pilots. Elders of Jeba and his wise men were in you to cock you, your sims. All the ships of the sea and their oatsmen were in you to make, to market your merchandise. Those of Persia, Lydia, and Libya were in your army as men of war. They hung shield and helmet in you. They gave splendor to you. Men of as bad with you, with your army, were on you, on your walls all round. All round. And the men of Gamad were in your towers. They hung their sheets on your walls all round. They made your beauty perfect. Tashish was your merchant because of your many luxury goods. They gave you silver, iron, Thin and laid for your goods. Jav and Tub and Meshek were your traders. They battered human lives and vessels of bronze for your merchandise. Those from the house of Togama traded for your wares with horses, steeds, and mules. The men of Dedan were your traders. Many eyes were the market of your hand. 
They brought the ivory tusk and ebony as payment. Syria was your merchant because of the abundance of goods you made. They gave you for your words, emerald. They gave you for the words, emeralds, purple, embroidery, fine linen, corals, corals and rubies. Judah and the land of Israel were your traders. They traded for your merchandise with merchandise with of millet, millet, honey, oil, and balm. Damascus was your ma merchant because of the abundance of goods you made, because of, of your many luxury items, with the wine of heaven and with the white wool. Dedan and Jeva paid for your wares, transversing back and forth. Wrought iron, cassia, and cane were among your merchandise. Dedan was your merchant in saddle clothes for riding. Arabia and all the princes of Keda were your regular merchants. They traded with you in lambs, rams, and gold. The merchants of Sheba and Rama were your merchants. They traded for your wares, the choice, the choicest spices, all kinds of precious stones and gold. Haran, Canaan, Eden, the merchants of Sheba, Assyria, and Shimad were your merchants. These were your merchants in choice items, in purple, in purple. In in purple clothes, in embroidered garments, in chests of multicolored apparel, in sturdy woven cards, which were in your marketplace. The ships of Tashish were the carriers of your merchandise. You were filled and very glorious in the midst of the sea. Your oils may brought you into many waters, but the east wind broke you in the midst of the sea. Your riches and ways and merchandise, your marinas and pallets, your caucus and merchandise, all your men of war who are in you and the entire company which is in your midst will fall into the midst of the sea on the day of your reign. The common land will shake at the sound of the cry of your pilot. All who handle the oars, the marinas, the marinas. All the pilots of the sea will come down from their ships and stand on the shore. They will make their voice heard because of you. They will cry bitterly and cast dust on their heads. They will roll about in ashes. They will shave themselves completely bored because of you. And they and give themselves with sackcloth and wood for you with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. In their wailing for you, they will take up a lamentation and lament for you. What city is like that destroyed in the midst destroyed in the midst of the sea. When your ways went out by the sea, you, you satisfied many people. You enriched the kings of the earth with your many luxury goods and your merchandise, but you are broken by the sea in the depths of the waters. Your merchandise and the entire company will fall in your midst. All the inhabitants of the eyes will be astonished at you. Their kings will be greatly afraid and their continents will be troubled. The merchants, among them we hiss at you, and you will become a horror and be no more forever. Ezekiel chapter 28, proclamation against the king of Tyre. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thor says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up and you say, I am a God, I sit in the seat of gods, in the midst of the seats. Yet you are a man and not a God, though you set your heart. Ah. <laughs> Yet you are a man and not a God, though you set your heart as the heart of a God. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. <laughs> There's no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom in trade, you have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of God, Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their sword against you. The beauty, the beauty of your wisdom and defy your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit and you shall die the death of the slain in the midst of the seas. Will you still, will you still say before him, who slays you, I am a God? Mm -hmm. 
but you shall be a man and not a god in the hand of him who slays you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised uh, by the hand of the of aliens. For I have spoken, says the Lord God. Lamentation for the king of Tyre. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. <laughs> you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond. Berlin oils and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbers and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who, who covers. I established you and you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. The iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a prevented out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed your old covering cherub from the midst of the fairy stone. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before, the, before kings that they might gaze at you. You defied your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst, it devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the people were astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Hallelujah. You see, this last description was not, was actually Lucifer. He's been cast down. He thought he could rise up. God made him beautiful, but he made himself ugly because he rose up against God. But we'll talk about that another time. Praise God. Proclamation against Sidon. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Sidon and prophesy against us and say, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am against you, O Sidon. I will be glorified in your midst. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I execute judgment in her and I'm hallowed in her. For I will send pestilence upon her and blood in the streets. The wounded shall be judged in a midst by the sword against her on every side. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And they shall no longer be a pricking prayer or a painful tone for the house of Israel from them, from among all who are around them, who despise them, then they shall know that I am the Lord. It's a notable thing to see that thrice in this proclamation alone, God declared that they may know that he is the Lord because they refuse to acknowledge God that he is God. Israel's future blessing. Thus says the Lord God, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered and I'm hallowed in them in the sight of the Gentiles. Then they will dwell in their own land, which I gave my servant Jacob, and they will dwell safely there, build houses and plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgment on all these, those around them who despise them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God. Ezekiel chapter 29, proclamation against Egypt. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, For says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Pharaoh of Egypt. O great monster who lies in the midst of his rivers, who has said, My river is my own, I have made it for myself. But I will put hooks in your jaws and cause the flesh of your rivers to stick to your scales. I will bring you up out of the midst of your rivers and all the fish in your rivers will stick to your scales. I will leave you in the wilderness, you and all the fish of your rivers, and you shall, you shall fall on the open field. You shall not be picked up or gathered. I have given you as food to the beasts of the field and to the birds of heavens. Then all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. When they took hold of you in the hand, with the hand, you broke, you broke and tore all their shoulders. When they leaned on you, you broke and made all their backs quiver. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, surely I will bring a sword upon you and cut off from you man and beast, and the land of Egypt shall become desolate and waste. 
then they shall know that I am the Lord. Because he said, the river is mine, I have made it. Indeed, therefore, I am against you and against your rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate, from Midgard to Sinai, as far as the border of Ethiopia. Neither foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast pass through it. It shall be, and it shall be uninhabited forty years. I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and among the cities that are laid waste. And cities shall be desolate forty years. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the country. Yet, thus says the Lord God, at the end of 40 years, I will gather the Egyptians from the people among whom they were scattered. I will bring back the captives of Egypt and cause them to return to the land of Patros, to the land of their origin. And there they shall be a lowly kingdom. It shall be the lowliest of kingdoms. It shall never again exalt itself above the nations. For I will diminish them so that they will not rule over the nations anymore. No longer shall it be the confidence of the house of Israel, but will remind them of their iniquity when they turn to follow them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord God. Hallelujah. Daddy, I love you. I love the Lord because he knows how. Of course he is God. Amen. Babylonia will plunder Egypt. And of course, if you see after that, Egypt never rose up again as a kingdom against any other kingdom. You can't beat my father. Babylonia would plunder Egypt. And it came to pass in the 27th year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to labor strenuously against time. Every head was made bald, every shoulder rubbed raw. Yet neither he nor his animal received wages from time for the labor which they expanded on it. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Surely I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. He shall take away her wealth, carry off her spoil, and remove her pillage, and that will be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor because they worked for me, says the Lord God. Oh, in that day, I will cause the horn of the house of Israel to spring forth, and I will open your mouth to speak in the midst of them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. I will come to the last chapter for the year and for the month. Ezekiel chapter 30, Egypt and allies will fall. Allies will fall. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, it all says the Lord God, Wail, woe to the day, for the day is now, even the day of the Lord is now. It will be a day of clouds, the time of Gentiles. The sword will come upon Egypt, and great anguish of, shall be in Ethiopia. When the slave fall in Egypt, and they take away our wealth, and our foundations are broken down. Ethiopia, Libya, Lydia, all the mingled people, Chob and the men of the lands who are allied shall fall with them by the sword. Thus says the Lord, those who uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down. From Midgard to Sinai, those within her shall fall by the sword, says the Lord. So is the Lord God. They shall be desolate in the midst of the desolate countries, and our cities shall be in the midst of the cities that are laid waste. They, then they will know that I am the Lord when I have set a fire in Egypt, and all our helpers are destroyed. On that day, the messengers shall go forth from me in ships to make the careless. Ethiopians are afraid, and great anguish shall come upon them, as on the day of Egypt, for indeed it is coming. Thus says the Lord God, I will also make a multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him, the most terrible of the nations, shall be brought to destroy the land. They shall draw their sword against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. I will make the rivers dry and send the land into the hand of the wicked. I will make the land waste and all that is in it by the hand of aliens. I, the Lord, have spoken. Thus says the Lord God. I will also destroy the idols and cause the images to cease from north. There shall no longer be princes from the land of Egypt. I will put fear in the land of Egypt. I will make patrons desolate, set fire on so on, and execute judgment in north. I will pour out my fury on saying the strength of Egypt. I will cut off the multitude of no and set fire set a fire in Egypt 
Sin shall be, have great pain, no shall be split open, and nought shall be in distress daily. The young men of Avin and P P Pi beset shall fall by the sword, and this city shall go into captivity. At Tehaphenes, the day shall be also, the day shall also be darkened when I break the yokes of Egypt there, and her arrogant strength shall cease in her. As for her, a cloud shall cover her, and her daughter shall go into captivity. Thus, I will execute judgment on Egypt. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Proclamation against Pharaoh. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, on the seventh day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and see, it has not been bandaged for healing, nor a split put on it to bind it to make it strong enough to hold a sword. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, surely I'm against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and will break his arms, both the strong one and the one that was broken, and I will make the sword fall out of his hand. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries. I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. But I will break Pharaoh's arms and he will groan before him with groanings of the mortally wounded man. Thus I will strengthen the hands of the king of Babylon, but the arms of, the, of Pharaoh shall fall down. They shall know that I am the Lord when I put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon and he stretches out against the land of Egypt. I will scatter Egypt, the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. With that, we come to the end of the reading for the day, for the week, and for the year. Hallelujah. But one thing you will notice in the book of Ezekiel is that God kept saying that they may know that he is the Lord. How important it is for us to recognize the Lordship of Jehovah God over us, the Lordship of Jesus Christ over our lives. This is Christmas season. Needless to say that you are hearing the gospel in every way. <laughs> Give your life to Christ. For Jesus is Lord. Do not reject him. He came because of you. He came because of me. You know, they say, Christmas, that Jesus is the reason for the season. In reality, you and I, we are the reason that Jesus came. If we were not, Jesus wouldn't come. So you and I are the reason for the season. And that's why we have to honor him and celebrate him. He came because of us. Jesus was born because of us to redeem us, to save us, and to bring us back to the Father. And it is high time to recognize that and honor him. Will you give your life to Jesus today? Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for how far you have brought us. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for making a way for us. And I pray that everyone that will watch will acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, this is Interesting Atisa. And until I see you on the 2nd of January, 2023, stay blessed. And Merry Christmas.